dad introduced me to basketball. I don't know that it was a formal introduction so much as he was watching it and dad, what are you watching? I'm gonna watch too. I remember third grade was when I had the conversation with him about wanting to do it for real and be good. I tagged along with him to high school gyms throughout the Washington metropolitan area and just loved it. I mean, he was a ref. I was taken in games, great competition in what is one of the hotbeds of the U.S. for talent on both the men's and women's side. Um, and it was our thing. It was the thing that we shared. He went on to be an assistant coach on my AAU program. My best friends to this day were my teammates. And so my dad introduced basketball to me and he's a big reason of why I ultimately fell in love with the game. My senior year, our sports and information director at Georgetown, Barbara Jonas said, or Barbara Barnes now, said to me, hey Mon, you should check out this media stuff. You're pretty good with these interviews. And so I took a journalism course at Georgetown and I kinda caught the itch. I was one of those players, student athletes, young women, that was emotional down the stretch. Like, I, don't talk to me about senior night because I'm gonna start crying because it's ending and it was dramatic. And so, and so for Barb to say that to me, it helped me process because I realized that I probably wasn't going to the WNBA and I didn't really wanna go overseas because I started to think about what could be in this space. And I felt like there was no way to remain relevant in terms of being a part of a team that went to the Sweet 16 and was ranked nationally and had some notoriety in the Washington DC area if I just left and went overseas. And so I wanted to capitalize on the network that I was beginning to form and jump right into my new career. And so, yeah, she was a big reason as to why I started to think about this thing in a real way. I think Robin Roberts is probably what I would consider the Michael Jordan of broadcasting in my personal aspirations or my personal vision board, if I can use that phrase. I remember her calling WNBA games. I remember her anchoring Sports Center. I remember when she made the jump to GMA. And of course, being so vulnerable and open with all of her health challenges. As she always says, make your mess your message. I believe she took that from her sister, but she says it too. Um, and so I think I grew up in a really unique area in Prince George's County where black professionals are a dime a dozen. Yes, there are some areas that lack resources, but for the most part, professional black people achieving goals and dreams was commonplace for me. And so I don't know that it ever registered that there would be barriers for me in pursuing this career because I looked at someone like Robin Roberts who was doing it. And as the adage says, if you can see her, you can be her. And so Robin Roberts was hugely important in terms of how I ended up here. My favorite hat to wear amongst my roles is definitely in-game analyst. I think that is the reason I got into the game, into the business, I should say, in the first place. Um, the games always have my heart. That is what I did and dedicated my life to for a really, really long time. The game has been good to me. Uh, and so anytime I get to be courtside and take it all in and share what I see or don't see and have some fun with a great play-by-play -play artist, I'm just in such a great place. I just love that. Fav one of my favorite interviews, and this is honestly a little bit of recency bias, I had a chance to interview Elijah Williams and Miles Brown at NBA All-Star Weekend. And the rapport of the three of us sitting there during our little side set during the interview, I asked Miles what advice he would give to Elijah as Blackish was winding down and the Wonder Years remake was just starting in terms of his experience. And I think being able to set up two young men to have a conversation with one another and they're both gonna be in the spotlight and the roles and pursuing their dreams. Like just to be able to facilitate that and I think it tugged on my heartstrings as a substitute teacher and probably would be a teacher if I wasn't doing this. And so it was, that interaction was just really special to me. I have been very fortunate not to experience blatant sexism, I think. Now what has been said behind my back, I can't get into. But I have been incredibly supported by my peers, more times than not, when I walk into a space, the comment is, you know, you played. And so outside of what may happen on Twitter and shout out to whatever filter is in place in, on Twitter in 2022, I don't give that my energy. I think I've learned a long, long time ago, you gotta have a healthy relationship with the word no. And so I just don't accept that. Women are not completely accepted in the sports analyst space, not yet. There is progress that one should be very, very proud of. I look at my colleague at ESPN, um, Chanae Gumake, who is on NBA Today regularly as an analyst. Roz Golan Wude jumps in as a radio analyst. 
Um, Candace Parker obviously doing her thing on TNT. Stephanie Reddy, who was actually a coach in the G League. I don't know if folks know that about Steph. She was a coach in the G League, has been an analyst, and now is a terrific reporter for TNT. And so I look around the league, and there are so many women in different roles. Zora Stevenson, who does play-by-play -play for the Milwaukee Bucks, alongside Lisa Byington, who is the lead play-by-play -play there. Kate Scott, who does play-by-play -play for the Philadelphia 76ers, and others. I know I'm forgetting somebody, but when you look around, it's still a minority position. And so, yes, there's been progress made. Um, I don't know if it is realistic to expect 50% or whatever equality completely looks like because it is still a men's sport. But I'm pleased with the progress. I would not say that it's a completely level playing field yet. My ultimate career goal is to make an impact. That might be nebulous, but I think that's the most important part of it all. I don't believe that we're here solely for ourselves. And so whatever role that looks like, however long that may last, for me it's about making an impact. And so I'm so proud to be able to show up as me and chip away at whatever standard may have existed and hopefully make the path a little easier for someone coming behind me. I'm Monica McNutt and I'm here to help you elevate.